Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Scary Stuff. Let's begin. Boo. Okay, enough Scary Stuff for you. So let's get started. This is a new uh, little thing I'll be doing for subscribers only. So there will be no blatant self-promotion whatsoever. If you're a subscriber to the channel, you will be getting these episodes. I'd like to start the first episode of Scary Stuff with a AMA, which is an Ask Me Anything segment. Now this is something that I will be doing frequently, or hopefully more frequently than um, I originally thought, maybe once a month or twice a month when I have the time. So if you would like to ask me anything at all, be it about hobbying, life, gaming, whatever it is, um, comment down below. Leave a comment with a question and I will be getting to the ones that are normally liked the most, kind of bumped up the scale of likedness. Uh, if you don't want to see a question, kind of bump it down or whatever and then we'll get to it. So the first one was um, I asked, if you could ask me anything, what would it be on the Facebook page at Scardcast Facebook page? So I have 18 different questions, and we're going to talk about them. And you'll get to know a little bit about me and me talking about myself. That's some scary stuff right there. You know, if you can get through the whole thing, that's fantastic. So first question comes from Cavalier. Uh, an avid commenter of the channel, says, what is the future direction of your army? What army? Eldar, Dark Eldar, my uh, Black Templars, um, the little bit of Tyranids I have, the Harlequins that I'm collecting, or my Tomb Kings? I'm going to go ahead and assume you mean Dark Eldar. So what's the future direction of my Dark Eldar? To be absolutely honest, it's painting and hobbying. You know, I've played a lot, now it's just a matter of painting all the models that I do own in order to get them completed. So over the next little period of time, the main focus is going to be for me to paint and model uh, my Dark Eldar force. So thank you for your question, Cavalier. Malice Von Reed. It's an intense name right there. Will you be adding Harlequins to your Dark Eldar? And Gary Buller says, What do you think of the new Harlequin book to go with your Dark Eldar? Well, I got some Harlequins. I got a, a troop. I got a um, Star Weaver or a Void Weaver, depending on how I'm going to build it. And a Solitaire. Still need to get a Death Jester, a Spirit Seer, but I might be converting a lot of them from all the spare Dark Eldar bits that I have, and Witch bits, and Scourge bits, and Reaver bits. Because in Dark Eldar, in uh, Harlequin Fluff, you have troops of Light, t Twilight, and Dark. So I really feel that I could create some like Dark-themed troops with a lot of the Dark Eldar bits. And because one troop box gave me a whole bunch of different arms and things like that that I can just kit bash. And, you know, with a unifying paint scheme, it'll all look relatively, um, relatively equal. Now, <laughs> how I'll be adding them or what do I think of the new book? I think it really adds to the Dark Eld army. The same as, you know, Eldar, the same as any of the other, like, supplement books. And I really think that it's really going to be fun to try out a few of the different dynamics within the uh, Harlequin uh, book itself. So thank you, Malice and Gary. Appreciate your questions. Dave Kachuk asks me, why Dark Eldar? That's like an origin story you're asking me to, to answer right there. Why Dark Eldar? To be honest, I started playing Dark Eldar because everybody thought they were absolute garbage and rubbish. And uh, when I started thinking about playing Dark Elder, 
I had a lot of folks in the local gaming group kind of laugh at me. And um, that soon changed when I started to learn how to play with the Dark Elder. And, uh, you know, and they found that Dark Elder are a really nasty army if played correctly and played well. And now I play Dark Elder because I just love how fast they are, mobile, how much firepower they can put out, how many things you have on the table, and their ability to really achieve mission objectives while really being disregarded for the safety of your own miniatures. Like, they're going to die, it's just a matter of knowing kind of where on the table you want them to die, because they're going to die anyway. So it's a very relaxed way of playing, but it's a very tactical way of playing, and that draws me. Now, hobby-wise as well, if you look at a Dark Eldar tank, for example, you have to pay pay a lot of money for it, first of all. Thank you, Games Workshop. But you have to paint every single crewman, you know, four crewmen to a Ravager. You have to paint the hull, the inside, the, the equipment, you know. And so hobby and modeling-wise, it's also a very time-consuming and, like, expertise-style army because of the amount of detail that goes into every model. So it keeps me engaged mentally and physically, and hence Dark Eldar. So thanks a lot for your question, Dave. I appreciate it. Question number five. Jack Ramsey asks, "What got you in? Or what got you into YouTubing? What got me into doing YouTube videos? Wow, it's been almost four years now, about three years. I started YouTubing because I was tired of people's battle reports." Mini war game battle reports were too long, and I couldn't spend two hours watching a battle report. I literally just skipped to the end and find out who won. Um, and you know, I didn't really know about Striking Scorpions channel. They they look fantastic, but um, you know, very long as well. And all the other battle reports was unpainted models, unpainted terrain, and proxies. And I just dislike that. At, like, as soon as I see a proxy in a battle report, I'm like, and done. I'm not watching the rest of this. Whether it's, you know, I want this Vendetta to be a Storm Raven, or this Terminator is an Ogre, or whatever it is. Proxies just turn me right off battle reports. So I said, hey, why not, you know, do battle reports of my own? So I started doing a couple battle reports, and it's kind of moved on from there, and now I do more than battle reports and view tactical videos here and there. It's really just a pastime for me, you know, it's nothing too serious, um, and I really enjoy it, I really have fun with it. So it's a very easy way of me to convey information and to, you know, uh, be, a, uh, be somebody that is knowledgeable but also can kind of tell you guys with a visual way of doing it. It's a little less time consuming than writing long blog posts because I can just ramble like I am right now. So it's just a good venue for what I want to do. Thank you, Jack, for your question. Um, number six, Robert Leclerc. Who's your favorite chaos god? Nurgle. Well, I should probably elaborate on that. Eh? Well, uh, Nurgle is my favorite chaos god since the first chaos um, codex. So, um, hold on. <clears throat> I knew I had it somewhere. The first Chaos Codex. When I started in the hobby, I really wanted to play with Chaos. But, um, my mum bought me a unit of regular Space Marine Terminators. So instead of playing Chaos, I ended up playing Space Marines. Because I didn't know how to, uh, about the concept of converting or anything like that. But Nurgle was always my one of my favourite. First of all, that artwork right there. Amazing artwork of Grandpa Nurgle. It was always so gross to me, and you know, and it was just, it was so cool. You know, like that predator there. That that predator. It's one of my favourite <laughs> little um, tidbits that I, you know, that just drew me to the Chaos Army. 
that and uh, you know when looking at the actual Nurgle page of you know things like that, the Nurgle page, the the, the converted chaplain into you know a Nurgle Terminator, you know they they really just bloated and and nasty. They they really attracted me. So from the beginning, you know Nurgle was like yeah decaying fly pus ridden you know, poxed space marines. Pretty cool. Thank you for your question, Rob. Um, number seven, Alan Hosking. What do you do when not involved in the hobby? Well, I run a sales and marketing firm. Um, I do promotional stuff and I'm involved in face-to-face -face marketing. So I get to talk to people all day long and show them cool stuff that then they want to buy. I'm also a father of a little three-year-old son. His name is Olivier, so Oliver in the French. And um, those are my two, you know, I'm a husband, of course, my wife, yay. If I forget her, she'd probably kill me, but she doesn't really watch my videos, so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> don't tell her I said that. Um, and uh, uh, so I'm a husband, a dad, I market stuff, and I do hobby stuff. Yeah, so that's a little bit about myself there. Thank you, Alan, for your question. Mike McKenney, question eight. How did you get into the hobby? That's a funny question, Mike. Well, um, it was a long time ago when I was younger. Um, I'm 28 right now, so let's say when I was about 14, 13 or 14, I got into Magic the Gathering. One of my friends was big into Magic at the time, so I ended up getting into it, building a few decks, playing a few games, and that kind of got me into that realm. As, um, and then I went to England um, and ran into a hobby shop, because I was big into building model planes and boats and things like that. My dad had gotten me into that. And I saw a big shelf full of Warhammer, and I thought it was really, really cool. So I ended up buying a third edition starter set with Dark Eldar and Black Templars as the protagonists and antagonists. And um, from there, I just, you know, because the Dark Eldar were horribly mismatched in that box set, I ended up playing more with the Marines and played Black Templars for a very long time. And it just kind of went from there. Um, I was living in Mexico at the time, so finding a hobby group in Mexico really spearheaded my development in the hobby, finding other people that played the game that I loved, and um, and not just playing my brother all the time. So then it kind of evolved from there. But yeah, that's how I got into the hobby itself, just by chance, really. And now I'm here. Mm-hmm. Scary stuff, that. Yeah. Question number nine. Ricky Kingston. If you could add anything to Dark Eldar, what would it be? And then he says, other than Vect. Of course, they took away. If I could add anything to Dark Eldar, what would it be? I would add the ability for Beastmasters to take other style beasts. To kind of be able to pick and choose from different, you know, like Tyranids or like, you know, Exodite world stuff, um, you know, biomechanical engineered stuff, you know, just really open it up for Beastmasters to kind of do whatever they want since fluff wise each Archon has a crazy fancy for some sort of game and hunt and they'll go and like capture big dragons or whatever it is they want to capture. But being able to kind of add that into the Beastmasters would be kind of cool. So you could kind of really switch up the dynamic of that of that unit. Like I get why it's like it is, but that's something that would be kind of cool to see. Thank you for your question, Ricky. I appreciate it. Ryan Catian, the chapter master of the Dork Lords. Check out their YouTube channel, the Dork Lords. They have some really cool battle reports and stuff on there. Um, any plans in the works to play versus mini wargaming? Yes, I would love to play mini wargaming. Um, 
you know, I had the pleasure of playing Mini Wargaming J or Mini Wargamer J. You know, not when he was with Mini Wargaming, but we did a battle report together. Um, and I can't. I would really like to play um, the guys down at Mini Wargaming. The biggest thing is I work full time, so having to book the time off work and then go and play them during business hours is the hardest thing for me because being in sales and promotions, I'm pretty much working like when everybody else has time off. And it's hard for me to book time off. But I do have plans to do it. And I'd like to do it sometime this year. Um, just don't quote me on it because life gets in the way sometimes. But thank you for your question, Ryan. Much appreciated. Question 11. Matthew Mullen. Bees? Ants? I don't know. Um, really? Bees, knees, trees, fees? Hmm, better than the tax. Let's move on, shall we? Thank you for your question, Matthew. Um, Evan James asks, What unit slash army gives you the most trouble? Eldar, with their wave serpents, especially at the moment, and mechanized Imperial Guard. That's more against my Dark Eldar. Lots of high strength, multiple shot weapons. Multi lasers, auto cannons, scatter lasers, um, shuriken cannons, and then like a Tesla heavy um, Necron army with Tesla destructors everywhere. The strength 7 twin link stuff. That always gives the Dark Eldar a rough time. So that uh, would be my the most trouble list. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your question, Evan. Uh, question number 13, Andrew Robertson. When are you coming to Niagara to accept my challenge? Um, same thing with the mini wargaming. I'd love to come down. Um, I'm working very hard. Um, but whenever I'm in an area for an extended period of time, I usually put posts up either on the Facebook page or um, on like local gaming group forums and pages. Like um, I'll be going up to Sudbury in the near future and I'll be going to play the guys from The Basement Collective. So check out their YouTube channel. They're doing a lot of content, videos, tacticas, unboxings, uh, battle reports. So check them out as well. They're a brand new channel that's been getting a lot of um, uh, press, so good stuff for them. But yeah, I'll I let you know, and then if we have a chance to meet, get together for a game, that would be really, really cool. Uh, so thank you for your question, Andrew. But um, it's not that I'm chickening out or anything. I'm just waiting for the right time to strike from the webway, when you least expect it. So, um, Brett Killeen. Would you be interested in going to Adepticon in Chicago? I'd love to meet you. Well, thank you, Brett. I'd love to meet you too, as well as every single person who watches the channel. Um, and I would love to go to Adepticon. Um, that's like... I, I cannot wait. As soon as my business is up and running, I will be trying to take Adepticon, the time for Adepticon, off from work and going to Adepticon and I will be able to enjoy it while people make me money. So that would be kind of cool. Um, and I'd love to meet you, absolutely. So thanks for your question, Brett. Vincent Booth, the owner of Sir Games A Lot in Barrie, Ontario, Canada, where we host the Barrie Bash, and we host a whole bunch of different tournaments and events, and there's gaming every Saturday, asks, how do you like your eggs? Scrambled. Yep. Scrambled eggs, a little bit of uh, fried onions in there, you know, tomato, then some salsa on it, because I was born in Mexico, so I love salsa, but scrambled. That's uh, how I like my eggs. But thanks for the question, Vince. Appreciate it. Question 16 from Brandon Michael Green. What's your favorite model in 40K? And I'll follow that up with Shane Kent's question. What's your favorite miniature in general? Good question. There are a lot of really cool miniatures that have been released. One of my favorite is the Emperor's Champion model, the new Emperor's Champion model um, that has like the guy with the sword like that. Uh, he's, uh, I don't know, I'm a Black Templar fan, so the Emperor's Champion 
is has always been a cool looking model for me in terms of 40k not probably the best uh, like sculpted or anything like that and in your end a close second is Lilith Hesprax because the proportion of the model in terms of uh, the you know like the toes and the feet and just the the facial features and or you know all the ratios on the the sculpt that it's just it's great like it's a really really good sculpt and um, those are some of my two favorite ones as for my favorite miniature in general I don't know I don't really think have that much of a of a spectrum in terms of what is a cool miniature and what isn't a cool miniature um, but um, you know some of the new kits that Games Workshop has been releasing have been fantastic like the Bloodthirster model and the Wraith Knight model and like all the big multiple part kits that you can literally put together however you want and they look cool you know like you're that knight the knight is pretty damn snazzy too so I can't pick one to be honest I just I like I like cool stuff and I'm not gonna segregate anything pretty scary stuff that I can't make up by man eh? yeah and last but not least with question 18 we have Mikey Dolman another of the Dork Lords so make sure you check out their YouTube channel because they put two questions up fantastic do you see yourself escalating your involvement in the hobby slash events management in the future absolutely absolutely I do um, all has to do with business and work but as soon as less time is spent on work and one time more time can be spent on hobby um, I will be definitely spending more time running events planning events sponsoring events hosting events and uh, I cannot wait you know right now the two main ones that I've been really helping well has been the berry bash It'll be the fourth year in 2015, an ITC event, which is pretty cool. And uh, the Michael Mudd Memorial Tournament that happens once a year. It's a big charity tournament that we do in Stratford, Ontario, Canada to honor a, um, uh, a fallen friend or a deceased friend, uh, Michael Andrew Mudd. And all proceeds from that go to help the animal shelter. And... Um, it's been a huge success every year, so I'm very, very excited to have it continue uh, this year as well. But yes, I'd like to start getting more involved. You know, right now the YouTube channel is going well. I'm just putting out content. I have to film a couple more things in terms of, you know, what else I'm going to do with Harlequins, uh, some more painting stuff, the building the Revenant Titan. Uh, video that I'm doing because I am building my Revenant Titan and um, you know it just here and there so I really appreciate you watching especially if you've watched all the way till the end um, as a little tidbit um, if you've been watching till the very end I uh, will be doing a contest when we hit 6,000 subscribers which is only a couple hundred away so I will be doing another giveaway like I did when we hit 4,000 subscribers earlier in the year and the goal is to hit 8,000 subscribers by the end of uh, 2015 so if you like the content you want the channel to grow just you know share the content subscribe like do the things that you normally do that really helps it in total other than that I hope you enjoyed this ask me anything a quick reminder if you'd like to ask me a question that you'd like answered right um, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to it as soon as possible um, you know I always try and answer them on there but this would be a cool little thing for us to have a bit of more of interaction in terms of uh, what's going on in the channel anyway I really appreciate your time thanks a lot for watching and that's some scary stuff you know really scary stuff and this is scary your grateful host out